Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be taking a look at something I've meant to look at for quite some time now. This of course is the Premium Bandai Master Grade Sandrock Custom EW and of course that EW stands for Endless Walls. So because we had the announcement of the Armadillo variant of this kit just a few days ago, I thought it was a pretty good time to actually review this right here. And of course if you want to see some more Master Grade Gundam Wing reviews, I've got a whole bunch of them on here. So you can check all of them out. I have not reviewed the standard variant of the Sandrock. I don't even have it. I've meant to buy it for years. So this right here is essentially the same kit, just in a different color with extra stuff. So I'm going to do a whole review of this kit as if it was the standard kit, as well as what comes in the Premium Bandai Variants box. But first, this video was sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Enter the epic world of Talaria, collect, equip, train and upgrade your team of heroes in order to start a journey of a lifetime. Raid is free to play and available on both mobile and PC. So today with my trusty Sandrock custom, I'm going to be opening up some blue shards. In Raid it doesn't matter if you get a good champion or a bad one because they're still useful. If it's a good champion, you can level them up and use them. If it's a bad one, you can sacrifice them in order to level up your good champions. So in our blue shards, first off we got a Algrin called Pounder. I wonder why he's called that. In that second blue shard we got a Sacred Order Knight called Judicator. He's got a little bit of a Gundam vibe there, Sandrock approves. And in our third shard we got a Skinwalker known as Blood Painter. So I've already got a level 30 Blood Painter already who's walking the line between getting sacrificed and kept. So all three of these are getting fed as food to a good hero. Right now in Raid there is a bunch of ongoing tournaments where you can compete against the entire Raid community while fighting the Spider's Den, Ice Golem's Peak, the Almighty Fire Knight or the Notorious Dragon. You can also compete in the brand new Arena Tournament, earn points according to your tier and win awesome rewards in the local and global tournament. As usual you can find me in game under the nickname Mechagaikotsu and if you go to the video description now and click on those special links if you're a new player you will get 100,000 silver, 1 energy refill, 50 gems and 1 free champion, Executioner. Just look at this cool champion, they're giving you for free. You will find your extra rewards here in your inbox for the next 30 days only. So once again, thank you so much to Raid for supporting the channel by sponsoring this video. Now on to the review. So just to get this started, here is the Master Grade Sandrock custom with absolutely everything that it comes with. So as this is my first time taking a look at any Master Grade Sandrock, first off I'm going to mention what comes with the base kit, that is the standard full retail kit. You get your Sandrock, but in a different color, it looks like this right here. The one we're looking at today, of course, is just a color variant of that kit. So the heat show tells, shield, submachine gun, pilot figure, hands, and the base adapter all come with the standard kit. So besides the color difference of the Sandrock, Sandrock Custom right here, the only difference with this Premium Bandai version is this. This of course being the anti-beam coating cape, but we'll take a look at that later. First off, we're going to start with the aesthetics of the actual mobile suit itself. Oh, and just in case I forget, the Sandrock Custom EW comes with a whole bunch of Katoki style water slide decals. But anyway, onto that kit. So first off, taking a quick look at the mobile suit and this time around there is no additional effort done whatsoever. The only actual thing I've done with this kit is panel line the muzzle, some parts of the head and the upper chest. That is it. Besides that, this is exactly what you will see when you snap build this together straight out of the box. And there really is just something about these particular designs. All of the features are just so prominent, well designed and they're just so photogenic. I mean, there's not many kits that I can just slap down on the desk like this. I haven't even set up the camera or anything. It's just in its default position. And the eyes catch the light perfectly. The brow just looks angry and threatening. And besides the fact that it outright looks like a chicken with the comb up top and everything, these kits visually have aged so, so well. They look astounding. And speaking of which, there is that full 360 degree spin so you can see every bit of detail on this yourself and decide whether or not you like it or not. Personally, I do prefer the color of the standard Master Grade Sandrock compared to this one. It is extremely chickeny and kind of distractingly so. But at the same time, this is the variant that you would have seen in that awesome movie, Endless Waltz. 
It's such an iconic, awesome design, and it will be even more iconic and even more awesome once we slap on that cape. There really is something about the Wing Master Grades. They're so nicely designed, they're so simple but at the same time so visually appealing, and they feel rock solid because of the ABS frame. If you've never built one of these kits, you really should, and if you have, you know just how awesome that they are. Like I mentioned already, this is the Kotoki redesign for the Endless Waltz movie, so it kind of goes without saying for most of you guys, but this of course is not the classic sand rock custom that would have won over all our hearts back in the day on Toonami, which would have been more like this little guy right here, the high grade, in a different color scheme. So of course, once again, this is the movie variant. Of course, just like everyone else, I am super hoping that sometime, sometime in the future, Bandai will actually make TV version master grades like what they're doing with the high grades right now. So they have not completely abandoned Gundam Wing, so there is that chance we will see the TV versions too. But I cannot deny that I absolutely adore the Katoki redesign. Maybe not so much in these colors because of the distinct chickeniness about it, but the clean, awesome design just appeals to me so much. On the whole, this kit does look absolutely fantastic, like I mentioned it's gorgeous, it's photogenic, but it does have some old school issues that comes with some older kits. We've got some super prominent mold lines in some super prominent areas like on the forearms and some massive nub marks here and there pocking the surface everywhere. Most of these are on white surfaces so they're not so apparent but some are on the darker colors so keep in mind there will be a little bit more effort involved in cleaning this kit up but not a whole lot, just a little bit more. As for the color accuracy in general, it is quite good. We do have a couple of bits missing color, as you can see from these and these. The larger grayer ones, those are from the side segments right here on the side skirting armor. They should be in gray. And those dark gray ones we can see up there for number four, those should be on the little vents on the sides of the cheeks right here. They're not the worst. All you need is some paint to top those up, but it is worth noting. Besides that though, the stickers are just for the eyes. That's number one, as well as for the head cameras, which is two and three. They do what those shiny stickers do and catch the light for the cameras on the front and rear of the head as well as those absolutely piercing eyes. So now moving right on into the accessories, here is everything that we saw earlier on, which is what is included in the box, and let's go through them one by one. So as for the hands on this kit, these are those typical swappable style fingers that we see on all of the EW wing kits. They just pop off like this, replace them just like so, and it is unusual to see white fingers on a kit, but once again, this is very similar to what we would have seen on the EW version of Wing Zero. So now moving on to the weapons, first up we've got the only ranged weapon in here, which of course is the beam submachine gun, aka a Gundam giant Uzi. So this right here is just entirely cast in grey, the handle can slot up like so for storage, pull down for use, We've got a flip out stock back here, and what can I say? It's a giant Uzi. What is not to like? To attach this, it's as simple as slotting it into the holding fingers, popping it all then into the hand like so, and there is what it will look like attached and equipped by the Sand Rock Custom. So that right there is solid as a rock and not going anywhere. Next up then in here, we've got the close range weapons, which are the iconic heat show tails. So we get two of these. They are essentially the same, just mirrored. We've only got the one blade in here on like the high grade, so no superheated variant. The only moving parts on here is this flipping handle, down for storage, up for use. These attach into the hands exactly like we would have seen with that submachine gun, and that right there is what they will look like attached. And once again, this is solid as a rock. Once again, this is because it's a simple build, and it's got that awesome, tough ABS frame. The heat show tails have this little clip section down at the very bottom. They can pop handle to handle just just like this, for this absolutely huge combined version of the two weapons. I mean, look at the length of that. That is one big weapon. When not in use, just flip down that handle, and then they can attach into the backpack, just like this, flip up that segment, and that is what they look like, stored away. Next up then in here, we've got that shield. Once again, this is in matching colors to the mobile suit. The shield features some colorless clear sections in there. It also features some articulation on the claw here. It can detach like this, move in like this. It is a little bit on the floppy side. The underside is entirely in yellow, which I don't think is quite color accurate. There is the articulation all the way down, all the way up, locked 
back into place, we have this little segment here, which of course is for attaching it onto the forearm. The connection here is simple, effective, and extremely strong. So that is definitely not gonna fall off on you. And that is important because this does have some extra inbuilt features. So up here we do have these little moving segments. They can move in like so. Moving one affects the other like that. These are for attaching these, but before you do, you need to pull this out, reattach it in just like so, so it's a little bit longer. The heat show tails just clip on up here, simple as that right there. There is one, there is the second one. Once again, then we can pop it into the rear of the forearm, just like that. And now we've got this massive, well, Pretty much a crab claw made of blades. So that is pretty awesome. Once again, this is not going anywhere because of the extremely tough build. And everything, just like we've seen already, is as solid as a rock. A sand rock! <laughs> also, if that was not enough for you, you can flip up this handle here. And the submachine gun can also be stored on the shield by popping this peg into a hole, just like so. So everything that we've seen so far have just been color variants of what would have came in the standard full release box. So what really makes this kit different besides the color scheme is the anti-beam cloak right here. So this is made up of four different segments of hard plastic. I do personally prefer pre-molded capes as opposed to cloth ones, so I do like this. It looks more dynamic, it's more photogenic, and in general they tend to just look better. Especially when compared to something like this right here. So to attach this you need to remove Sandrock's head, then remove these little segments up on the shoulders just like so, flip it around and whip off the backpack for now, just pop on the front and next section of that cloak onto where you move those little shoulder segments, then just attach on the left and the right shoulder armor onto the shoulders, flip it around to the back, attach in the rear section of the cloak, then you reattach on the backpack, and finally reattach on the head. So the only thing you do lose in this were those two little shoulder segments. So there is the full 360 degree spin of the Sandrock Custom with the anti-beam cape attached. So I do think this looks absolutely fantastic. I definitely prefer something like this to an actual cloth cape. But because this is made out of seven or eight individual big old pieces of plastic, you can see the gaps between each of those, so that may or may not be to your liking. But this does add a whole lot of awesome mass to an already awesome looking Gundam. So even though this does feature some articulation, it is a little bit basic, so you're not going to be pulling off any sort of dynamic poses, especially the type of ones you would have been seeing in those particular iconic scenes from the Endless Waltz movie. It's definitely not going to be able to raise its hands up over its head, holding onto those heat show tails, so it is mainly just as a kind of big old display piece for, for basic, stationary poses. Also, I will mention it is kind of prone to fragmenting apart when you're trying to put it into said stationary poses, but uh, it is pretty cool, but not without its kind of hindrances. So anyway, there is what it will finally look like up in its final resting place up on your shelf for that shelf presence test. So of course, this is a wing master grade, so it means it is a little bit on the short side, but it does make up for that with that big old cape. So finally moving on to the build and the articulation of this kit, and as is usual with Master Grade wing kits, it's not really the greatest. It's definitely not the worst, but there's a lot of limitations at the ankles, hips, waist, and torso. And in the end, you can't really get a whole lot of dynamic poses out of this. So as for a general comment on the build, the frame is mainly made of ABS, if not entirely made from ABS. So that means it is extremely tough, but can feel a little bit springy and soft at times. And some joints like the hips can slowly slide over time, but on the whole, solid as a rock. As for the articulation, as usual from the neck down, the neck is extremely basic. It is a double jointed neck, but you don't get much of a giggity giggity goo out of this. A little bit, but it can't look up too high because of this big old neck plate and this plastic bit around the neck in there. Same with the side to side tilt, quite limited, and that can spin all the way around and off. The joint inside the torso, which links to the shoulders, is quite nice. That allows the shoulders to pull forward and out quite a lot, just like you're seeing right here. The shoulder armor can move up like so. There is the arm all the way up. It can rotate 
360 at that point right there. Up on the shoulder then we have this little flappy flappy of armor right here. Full rotation at the upper arm. That right there is the elbow bend so it is double jointed. It's okay not great. I really do not like the wrists on these kits. It's a ball and socket but this section of armor is just held in by the hand and it's just a little bit awkward. It is extremely strong but just a little bit awkward. The thumb can move at this point right here. That's a ball joint. As for the ab crunch and the movement to the back etc there's nothing absolutely nothing in the torso of these kits besides the bit of a ball joint down here that doesn't really give you much besides some basic rotation. The backpack features some rotation on these segments which attach on the heat show tails as well as these parts that pivot up and down like so. The waist armor on the master grade wing kits is a nightmare. These always pop out but this is what we get up and down here there is a ball and a hinge inside of that it can flip out to the outside like that the side skirting armors are on the weirdest thing ever which is like an oblong ball just look at that like any twist at all and these will just pop right off I don't know what they were thinking we've got a double premium butt flap back here but again oblong balls these tend to pop off quite a bit the waist joint in here is just a single peg into a hole so there is no dropping mechanism in here this just pops in just like so As as for those kicks, there it is all the way out to the front, a bit blocked by the front skirting armor there. There it is all the way out to the side. Be careful with this joint because it is quite tight, but there it is all the way out so you can almost, almost get the splits. Ah, I would call that the splits, definitely. And finally then there is the leg kicked out to the back, so not too bad. Next up then we've got full, oh, not quite full, so partial rotation of the upper leg. So we do have a bit of a armor lip up here which does block it slightly so it doesn't go the whole way around. As for the leg then, we we have a double jointed bend at the knee. There is the top one. We've got a bit of a moving piston inside of that. There is the lower point of bend and we have a moving gimmick in the knee. So here is the entire movement all in one go. That is extremely extremely nice. Once again these don't have the prettiest joint but what they do looks quite nice. At the ankle then we've got two ball joints, one right here, one then down here and as for the payoff of both of those, without removing the foot off the ground there it is all the way to the front so that is quite bad. There it is out to the back, that is quite good and there is the side to side pivot so again quite basic. We don't have anything at the foot at all so no bend down or up and that would be it for the crouch so again these kits when it comes to articulation quite basic. So that right there is it for the review and as is usually the case with the master grade wing EW kits the Sandrock custom right here is silver tier. So when I say silver tier the master grade wing kits have always been to me the baseline quality for master grade kits but that was quite a few years ago so the tiering system had to kind of evolve over time to reflect that. So this is more like what I would consider a baseline master grade kit from a few years ago. It's quite nice, it's solid, it looks gorgeous, but it is lacking a lot in the features and the articulation department. If you want yourself an absolutely fantastic looking master grade that can pull off some basic poses and be solid as a rock while doing it, then this is one you want in your collection. But if you want a really crazy model kit with a lot of features, some mad articulation and something more akin to modern kits then this might not be the one for you but I love these kits so I cannot recommend them enough they're just not so modern so once again all my thanks to Raid for supporting the channel by sponsoring this video right here all my thanks to you guys for watching it and as always make sure to come back for more Gunpa reviews and I'll see you next time